Kicking with Coach Ruiz, brought to you by Baptist Health. Round two, postseason edition with Coach Ruiz. Coach, how are we feeling? Impressive victory in the quarterfinals over Stetson. Your boys are buzzing right along here, and now you're at the semis. You're on your home field still. Um, before we get into X's and O's, just describe like the feeling around this program, the buzz that you're creating on campus. Like, what's that feeling like right now? Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. It just it's great to see the smile on the boys' faces and you just know that it lifts their spirits to know all the work that they've done in the off season, everything that was kind of somewhat removed from them just you know six months ago, eight months eight months ago, to be able to 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 validate their work. And to know that all the sweat and tears, which, you know, which, which it's good for everyone. But when you get validated with some some relative success, um, it's just nice to see the happiness that they have for one another, supporting each other, receiving the recognition um, from their peers, which, you know, like you said, you know, the buzz around school. So it's just really nice to see that. It's something that we as coaches, yeah, winning is awesome, you know, but like we really want to make an impact in kids' lives and, and bring allow the game to bring some of those successes and use some of the defeats as opportunities to, to get better too. Um, but we love, we love to teach lessons more on the success piece of it. Uh, and that's what last couple of weeks have been, which has been really nice for the boys. Something a little different this year, um, you know, in a typical year, you'll see every team at least once in the league um, this year with, with the, formation of divisions in an effort to limit travel from from COVID-19 precautionary standpoint, you're now seeing a team in Lipscomb this weekend um, or tomorrow, I should say on Thursday that you have not seen yet this year, at least in person. I'm sure you've seen them on film. Um, But, you know, a a program, I'm sure there won't be a lot of secrets, but it's still, you know, when you get on the field with a team like that for the first time, um, there's going to be some Mm -hmm. unknown, just, you know, speak to that unique sort of circumstance we have here. Yeah, it really is. You know, we went into the Stetson game, having played Stetson twice, you know, overall playing them three times. And we try to focus on, um, you know, re-scouting them, making sure that we we didn't just rest on their previous performances because the season's so short and everyone's evolving so quickly, um, especially because of the opportunity to train every single week without midweek games. I think teams are have really evolved, as we have, over the course of the season. Um, so, so seeing a brand new opponent this late in the season without, like you said, I mean, yeah, we, we know who they are. We've watched them a little bit, but not having a taste of for their real speed, their real intensity, their mental uh, desire in the game. Those are things that, you know, it influences the tactics, it influences, you know, the moments in the game. Do we want to start fast? Do we want to pressure them a little bit? Do we think they're going to pressure us? you know, that, that, that kind of chess game a little bit. Um, we're kind of going to go, you know, with a gut feeling. Um, the nice thing about it is it's kind of how we've kept the last couple of weeks about us. Like, we feel like we're not as good as we can be still. Um, and the focus has been on how do we continue to get better and make teams have to adjust to us. We certainly know and expect certain things from Lipscomb, uh, and we'll, we'll, be, we'll be prepared and we'll train for it. But ultimately, we have spent the large amount of our weeks and training opportunities focusing on getting our details better a little bit, which I think still we have quite a bit of flaws in our game, but are all working in in the trajectory in the right direction. So um, I think it would be difficult. I think Lipscomb's a very, very good team. Um, We know them well from a a, a program standpoint. Each year is a little bit different, but we know some of their players well. Um, we know what they try to do. They're well coached. They have a lot of energy. They play a good brand of soccer, uh, and they just create some some matchup problems for us that we're going to have to 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 deal with. You know, you, you talk about creating matchup problems. You're you're staring. Any team that comes in here now is going to be staring at a defense that has pitched three straight shutouts, uh, has yet now to allow a goal at home in conference play. That streak continued. Uh, you know. Every team is going to play on our field the rest of the way. Uh, you know, you know, we keep talking about it every week, how good this defense has been and how unified they've been. But, like, I mean, what more can we add to that? Like, they continue to do this, and it's so impressive. And, you know, there aren't a lot of teams in the country that are doing this right now, not just in the A-Sun level, but at any level where they're pitching this many shutouts. Like, just speak to that unit again. Yeah, I think the unit is seeing that as a, you know, almost as a goal for them. 
like the attacking players get to get the goals and assists and the glory and the money and the girls like that's that's for the attacking players right the the defensive players it's not sexy to be a defender so they're looking at shutout as like no that's our claim to glory <laughs> you know they're they're kind of sticking to you know we want to get shutouts in every game but it's really about the process of the shutout like shutouts are about you you can get scored on if you don't allow, don't allow someone to shoot you can't allow someone to shoot if you close down the space, if you put them into wide areas, if you deny crosses. So we're, we keep talking about the process of protecting your box. Because once the ball arrives in someone's box, it's, it's catchy at that point, right? Like it's, it's, a, it's a touch, it's a handball, it's a foul, like it's a, you know, or you, or you allow someone to go through on the dribble and that's where shots come through. So we're trying to defend our box. So we, it's impossible to do it for 90 minutes. So then our back line has to be really well structured in our back three, but really the players in a surrounding area outside the box, the wing backs, the holding mids, the, the high press, um, you know, allow, this allowing the ball to come into that region as much as possible, have allowed our center backs to deal with the limited amount of times the ball has arrived in our box. So they don't feel like they're getting bombarded with, with chances. Uh, so it's really been a team defending. You know, we talk about the way we have scored goals it has been like a, it has been team goals. The ball has started from the back. We've we've been able to break break through the pressure and then attack at force. Defense has been the same thing. By the time the ball arrives at our box, we have tried to delay their progression as much as possible, which then allows us to get numbers behind the ball, um, and then defending numbers. And and our back three have done a great job, not just individual defending, but in communicating and making sure people were in the right slots, and then coming up big when they have to. Um, but you don't want to propose that problem to them too many times in the game. You want to eliminate how many times they have to defend inside their own box. So group, so group defending has been huge for us. The buy-in, the guys want to help the back line um, has really helped, you know, the, the, the back three and the goalkeeper do a fantastic job. Yeah. Something I, I, I wanted to ask you last week and I forgot and something that thankfully continued. Uh, someone made a con comment in the press box the other last time around that, that Matt back in goal is so comfortable with the ball at his feet. Um, can you just talk us through how valuable that is um, to have a goalkeeper that is comfortable with the ball at his feet and to be so confident with that? I mean, he plays so confident back there. Um, that is a unique look to me. I've seen a lot of, a lot of goalkeepers that, that struggle when the ball comes to their feet just through my years of doing this and playing back in the day. But like Matt's so comfortable in that setting. Like how valuable is that? Yeah. Sometimes a little too comfortable <laughs> for my liking. <laughs> I could deal with them being a little more decisive sometimes. Sure. Um, but yeah, it's great. I think the, the way that we play, um, you know, we talk about, you know, the, the game is about numerical overload all over the field, right? Can you get an additional player into that area of the field? So in the buildup play, he has to be the goalkeeper. He, he's the overload. He's the extra player that doesn't have a man standing on him. And by the time they arrive at Matt, that means that they've left somebody else open. And then Matt can play through that guy or through a different option. So it's super important for us to utilize our goalkeeper. Um, that's something that he has gotten better over time. Um, Matt has always enjoyed being on the ball, but that, I wouldn't say that that's, that's been a strength of his. Um, so over time, playing the way that we want to play, getting some consistency in the players around them, which makes a big difference too. When you're switching up those matchups around them, um, you know, you, timing is important, right? Quality on the ball is important. Matt has confidence now that he can give the ball to certain people around him uh, and they'll be able to execute well. Um, so it's something that he's put in the work with him often hasn't been the, the execution. It's been a decision in that moment. So Matt is a student of the game. He's improved the last four weeks, comes in and watches video reviews. First thing Monday, Matt's the first guy here on Monday at 10, 10 a.m. watching video of his performance and how he can continue to make better decisions. And I think that's where the comfort level that you've seen. The game has slowed down for him a little bit because he's able to see things above his own direct line. He's able to see one or two lines above him. And he's able to deal with the pressure um, of the defenders around his environment a lot better. So it's a huge attribute to him. Uh, we, we've challenged him to be a better student of the game, and he's responded extremely well 
and you, you, you can see it's paying off. I want to touch on Jake Johnson real quick, getting his first goal of the season, I believe of his career, uh, in that, in, you know, to get, to get us on the board the other day, like, um, he's a guy who's been a starter, a reserve, you know, off and on, like has had a, has had a unique career and it's kind of a do everything guy for you Just speak to him breaking through. Yeah. It's interesting because you're right. Like he's had a little bit, you know, of, of a, of a down he started as a starter, you know, the season and then didn't feel like our attacking play was really generating a lot of opportunities. And then, so we tried a couple other guys, then he started changing a little bit, but, you know, but he's played in every game. Like he's come, he's typically the first or second to come off the bench in one of those high positions. And, you know, with, and with Reggie being our last game, which we relied on Reggie a lot, he's been such a key, key part of our attack. You know, Jake stepped up as the natural substitution because that's who comes in for Reggie. Um, and he should have had a goal like with 45 seconds into the game. I mean, he had a wide open chance. Uh, I think the moment goes like he couldn't believe that so quickly he's going to be able to make an impact. Um, but yeah, but he stuck, he stuck it out. He held the ball well for us and um, good, good decisions on the ball. And then he saw an opportunity to get him beyond their, you know, their last line, took the first touch really well and put the ball around the keeper in a one v one situation. So I mean, he, I mean, Jake is just one of the very many stories that we have on the group that are just waiting for their chance and waiting for their chance without complaining, um, not happy with their role, which we, we don't want someone to be happy with not playing minutes, but being respectful, understanding and controlling what you can control, which is, okay, what can you do when your chance gets to you? Have you been ready for it? Have you been doing all the little things that will allow you to be successful now? Um, and Jake, once again, he's one of many guys that have been working in the dark, have not has not gotten the minutes that maybe he feels deservingly so, but it hasn't been a, a knock on him. It's just been testament to the guys that have gotten the opportunity, such as Reggie and, and Olivier in his position. And he knows that. And I think that's the kind of cool thing about the guys. Like there's no resentment towards somebody else playing in your position. There's respect that they're playing well and and a little bit of urgency on your end that man, when I get my chance, I better perform so I, so then I can extend my minutes on the field. Um, and Jake was ready for his chance, and we have every confidence in the world in him and other guys that if they need to step up, they'll do that. You just mentioned Olivier re real quick right there. Um, was recognized this week as a top 50 freshman in the country by Top Tour Soccer. He scored again the other day. Um, you know, what's his ceiling? What's the future like for him? And it, it's incredibly valuable having him now and playing at the level he's playing at. And, you know, the, the season's in front of us still, but, you know, the, you know, the, the ceiling for him has to be really high. Oh, absolutely. And I think, I think all of you, I think you can see the talent, right. And, and, and the talent reflects in some of the goals and assists that he's having, but he is probably the, the, the most humble kid on the team. And he's just quiet. And he's a worker. Um, he's been, by a large, and maybe Reed Davis as a freshman was similar, one of the more intelligent players on the field coming in as a freshman. Just, you know, he comes from, from, from Mount Verde Academy, from that SEMA program that they have, where they spend a lot of time educating players, and they're typically pretty ready for the college game. But his level of understanding uh, and, and adaptability to, the, to his role as it kind of changed a little bit throughout the season, and just be able to execute in every role that he gets put into has been has been pretty surprising and really impressive to be to be honest. Um, I think his ceiling is is unbelievable. I think he's a kid that plays well with others, uh, which is not typical to a high talented kid, right? Like we we want your talent to be able to reflect onto others, like make others better around you. So he right. plays really well with others. Like he wants to connect. He doesn't want to make it about himself. In fact. We want him to be a little bit more assertive, a little more aggressive, because we know, like you said, we know, we know his potential and his ceiling. But he's just so willing to be a, to to be a team guy um, and to put others in a good position. So um, I think he should have three or four more assists to his name if guys had completed the final pass um, and been a little more aggressive early in the season. I think he would have had even more goals to his name as well. But yeah, just just elated for him. He's just a wonderful young man. Um, a team, a team, a team guy first that has a ceiling that could take him as far as he really, he really wants to go and intelligent kid, good student, good family. Um, so it just really fits what we're looking for in, in our, in our program. Coach, you know, we're really looking forward to this. Um, you know, 
I expect a great crowd out at Southern Oak Stadium for the ASUN semifinal on Thursday night when the lights are on once again. Um, you know, should we be fortunate enough to move on to that championship match on Saturday? I expect a great crowd out there too. I've already spoken to a couple of head coaches that say they plan to bring their teams out. So, you know, I expect it to be an electric environment out there uh, on, on Thursday night. And, and of course, Saturday night, if we're fortunate enough to be there. You know, any, any word on the way out here? No, just, just happy with the guys' preparation, you know, throughout, throughout the week. It's just been something that it's been, it's been humbling to, to be a coach that can this late in the game can almost like take a step back because you're just so satisfied and happy with the way the boys are behaving. And, and so it's a lot, a lot of credit to them in the way that they've kind of approached the game. Um, they're ready for, for Thursday night. They know that nothing is guaranteed, nothing is promised. Uh, we do think that we're going to see the best team in the North on Thursday night. Um, and I think the, the winner of this game will give themselves a really good chance to win it all. So we're looking at this without, without looking ahead or without, you know, under evaluating the other teams because they're good teams. But we do think that this game will determine, has the potential to determine the, the, the champion uh, of the conference. So this game for us is a championship game. It's a, you know, um, win and continue to, to, to live on and, and, and live the dream of, of, of lifting a trophy on Saturday. Um, so really encouraged with our guys, encouraged with our community. We had a great crowd against Stetson. Expect the same thing on Saturday night, on Thursday night, and then Saturday night. Uh, just keep motivating our guys and be, being our 12th man on the field. Uh, playing at home. That should, that's the feel that we should get. Um, so we're hoping to get that on Thursday night. That's awesome, Coach. We're looking forward to it. And certainly uh, next time we talk, hopefully you have some hardware to show off on this call. So awesome. have a good one, Coach, and best of luck to you. Thank you so much.